So, we've been getting a lot of news and rumors about the DCU lately, but one thing we haven't really heard anything about has been the Teen Titans. Rumors have been circulating for years, but nothing official, and that feels like a bit of a waste. The Teen Titans are one of DC's most premier teams, not just because of the huge success of the 2003 animated show, but also just for the history of DC Comics, with their stories sparking a whole new generation of character-driven storytelling for the company. They didn't get much love in the last universe, and I think that this reboot could be the perfect opportunity to bring the Titans to the big screen. And so how can we introduce this team and these characters into the world of the DCU while still on honoring their history and ideas that make their story so special. All coming from me, a grown adult with back pain and bills to pay. The second Beast Boy starts talking about like, skibbity toilet, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how he does it, but Dick Grayson has managed to be in his late teens slash early 20s since the 1940s. This is the face of an 84 year old. Think about that for a second. He must have some crazy skincare routine. Which is why this video is brought to you by Geology. Skincare as a concept can be kind of difficult to understand. There's so many washes and ingredients and different products you have to figure out. And everyone has unique needs, so basically you just have to trial and error until something works out. But Geology creates simple and easy to understand skin and hair care routines customized just for you with ingredients that have been proven to work by dermatologists for decades. You just take a quick 60 second quiz and tell them all about your skin goals, if you want to target acne, dark under eyes, anti-aging, or just general clear skin and skin health, and they'll develop a dermatologist grade personalized routine and deliver it to your door. I've actually been using Geology for years at this point. It sounds weird, but I actually really love the consistency of their face wash. It's really thick and dense, and so it lathers up really easily in the shower. And they give you two bottles of it, one for the morning and one for night, which is a little thing that I really appreciate. The routines are super easy and not complicated, just a face wash and sunscreen in the morning, and then at night, another wash, and then the reward winning eye and night creams. Geology prides itself on efficacy and focuses on delivering real results. From their affordable skin revitalizing vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid serum, their two times award-winning co-wash and hair care products, and their amazing smelling line of body wash and deodorant, Geology takes care of all your self-care and hygiene needs. Use my code and get 70, 70% 70 off. Oh my God, how are they making money off of this? Use my code and get 70% off your personal skincare trial set, plus 50% off any add-ons. Special thanks to Geology for sponsoring this video, and thanks to my patrons for able to get all my videos early and ad-free for just $1 a month. I was originally gonna make this video a roster video, sort of like I did with my DCU Justice League video, but then I realized that the Teen Titans isn't really a team with a rotating roster like the Justice League. Sure, there are some members that come in and out depending on the stories, but not nearly to the same level of variety like the Justice League does. And you can't really pick and choose characters from across the different Titans generations since so much of what makes their story special are their relationships and their dynamics. And like, I could just list the usual five characters and then throw in like a wild card pick and call it a day, but as easy as that video would probably be, I wanna do a little something more than that. And so instead, I wanna focus on the elements and the ideas that you'd have to get right to build a good Teen Titans movie. We open at the Justice League satellite orbiting over Earth. Batman teleports up to the main deck along with his new partner, Dick Grayson as Robin. As Batman and the rest of the Justice League prepare to go out on a mission, Robin is taken through a door into a small room with four other kids his age. The other sidekicks. A boy wearing red scaled armor, a girl with dark hair and a yellow lasso, a boy in a red Robin Hood costume, and a boy dressed in yellow spandex moving at super speed. At first, Robin is a bit reserved and not sure what to make of these kids, but immediately the five of them hit it off and we see that they have a connection, not just as partners or as fellow kids superheroes, but as genuine friends. It then cuts to years later. Dick Grayson, now Nightwing, looks at a photo of him and his old friends, Roy, Donna, Garth, and Wally, and he wonders where the time went and what happened to the Teen Titans. For over a decade, the Teen Titans was a team of just other heroes' sidekicks. When the book first began in 1964 by Bob Haney and Bruno Parmiani, it was very much Justice League Junior. Just the wards and the partners who all teamed up on their own and had their own adventures. But then in 1980, Marv Wolfman and George Perez relaunched the series in a whole new direction with new Teen Titans, choosing instead to focus on character-driven stories and interpersonal relationships. They introduced characters like Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, Cyborg, and merged them with that classic team, redefining how people saw the Titans. Now no longer was it just a book about the sidekicks, but instead about these original young heroes who felt real and relatable. It was very much made as a response to Chris Claremont's run on X-Men over at Marvel, which also was a breakthrough in this type of character-driven story. And for years, the Teen Titans were seen as DC's equivalent to the X-Men solely thanks to the work of Wolfman and Perez. The 2003 animated series pulled a lot of elements from the Wolfman and Perez run, namely the roster and the villains. And so I think taking a look at this run is the perfect way to translate Teen Titans into the movies. Now, you might be saying that it's easy to make a Teen Titans movie to just make it like the 2003 show. Well, you kind of, 
can't. That series was phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. I grew up with it. The characters, the tone, the action, the animation style. It's a huge reason why I became such a big fan of Dick Grayson and of DC overall. I have a ton of nostalgia for that show. The theme song still pumps me up every time. And it'll always have a special place, not just in my heart, but so many people even this many years later. But trying to replicate that doesn't really work. And believe me, DC has tried. Look at the early seasons of Titans, as well as 2021's Titans Academy by Tim Sheridan and Rafa Sandoval. The pitch for that book was really cool. It was about the original Teen Titans members teaching a school for a new generation. But in an attempt to appeal to fans of the show, they introduced Red X, who was original to the series and had a whole mystery of his identity, which overshadowed everything else it was trying to do. And so its good ideas were held back by simultaneously trying to appeal to fans of the show. On paper, it makes a ton of sense to try to capitalize off that marketability and lean into the nostalgia of that show's fans, to use the brand and the recognizability of the IP to sell similar versions of the Titans. But I think it comes down to adapting an adaptation, and I'd rather focus on that Wolfman Perez run and why that was so great, and see what ways we can capture that magic organically. The Teen Titans history as a group is a huge part of what makes that team so special, and the evolution of that classic team into the new Teen Titans is why the Wolfman and Perez run works so well. While you could just have an all-new roster show up and team up on their own, like in the 2003 show, I think it's a lot more interesting if you pay homage to their roots and to their origins before you modernize them. And so we can establish that there was the original team of the Fab Five before eventually transitioning into the iconic roster. Dick Grayson's Robin, Roy Harper is Speedy, Donna Troy is Wonder Girl, Garth is Aqualad, and Wally West is Kid Flash. It would be great to get a scene like in Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wen's Robin and Batman, which is a book that I talk about any chance I get because it's really good, where we see them all meet for the first time and go on a little adventure together and form those bonds. We're still not really sure what the timeline looks like for this DCU or if other characters' mentors like Green Arrow or Aquaman are even going to be a part of the League. But if Damien's going to be the new Robin, I think there's room to have these characters meet when they're younger in flashback form. From there, you could establish that they teamed up from time to time and fought some lower level bad guys. But the biggest thing that I want to make clear is that above all else, they're a group of friends. Five kids whose parents work together, basically, who by sheer exposure and time spent together grew extremely close and formed these bonds. But over time, they started drifting apart. There wasn't some huge fight or big event or death that happened that forced them to disband. But just like a lot of friend groups you have when you're a kid, some stay in touch and stay close, but others get jobs, get married, move away, and you just sort of stop talking to them. And I think it could be really interesting to explore that here. They just grew up. It's kind of sad in a way, and maybe characters like Donna or Dick could look back and wish that they stayed in touch, which is what drives them to make this new team. And that brings us to the present day, and the movie could be about these characters reconnecting while also reviving the idea of the Teen Titans into something new. And the new roster will be Dick Grayson, Donna Troy, and Roy Harper returning, and being introduced to Starfire, Cyborg, Raven, and Beast Boy to form the new Teen Titans. For Dick Grayson, I'd want him to already be Nightwing at this point. You could show his transition out of the Robin mantle over the course of like a Teen Titans trilogy, but considering where we're going to be at in the DCU time, Timeline, I think Dick should already be Nightwing by now. And you can show that story in a solo Nightwing movie. Oh, hey, I made a video about that. Would you? Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Look at that. Whoa, isn't that a coincidence? And you might be asking why Dick Grayson and not Tim or Damien as another Robin. I thought about doing that, but I think Dick Grayson has such strong relationships, not just with the Fab Five, but also characters like Cyborg and especially Starfire, that would feel wrong to just swap him out with one of the other Robins. They tried doing that with Damien during the Rebirth era by Ben Percy and John Boy Myers. And while it worked fine, that book was more focused on Damien himself as opposed to the whole team. And the same goes for Tim. He works best with characters like Connor Kent's Superboy and Bart Allen's Impulse and Cassie Sandmark's Wonder Girl. They were their own Teen Titans team in the mid-2000s thousands, but they were originally part of the Young Justice books, and I'd rather see those dynamics in a dedicated Young Justice movie. Also, I just want all the messiness that's going to come about from a Dick Grayson, Starfire, and Batgirl love triangle. I love the chaos. Now, the original New Teen Titans roster put Wally on the team and not Roy Harper, and so I'm making that swap mainly for selfish reasons. One, I want Wally to be on the Justice League at this point. I think he's an integral part of both teams, but he could serve a little bit better on the League to further distance us away from the Barry Allen obsession we had in the movies and TV shows. But number two, Roy's been through a lot lately. That dude needs some love. He's genuinely such a great character. And aside from like a whole trilogy of Green Arrow movies, I don't think we'll get another chance at that. Donna Troy is also a character that's just been completely ignored for so many years. I'm really hoping that these movies end up doing something with her as Wonder Girl and the rest of Wonder Woman's supporting cast. Her origin is a total nightmare. If you thought the debate between Diana being made of clay or the daughter of Zeus was confusing, oh my God, just you wait. Since her creation in 1965, Donna has either been A, a younger version of Diana, B, a an orphan that was adopted by Diana and brought to Themyscira. C, an orphan that was raised by Kronos in the Greek Titans. D, a magical duplicate of Wonder Woman. E, another orphan raised by Themyscira again, but like a different a different case. Or F, another magical golem that was created to replace Diana as Queen of Themyscira. So yeah, if they could just like pick one, that'd be sick. Also, Donna Troy Oboyo 17. That's all I'm going to say.
As for why Garth isn't on the team, I think it'd be cool to have him come back as Tempest later down the line. The Wolfman and Perez run explained his absence by just saying he had to stay in Atlantis because he's not a very popular character, which honestly is kind of funny. Or you could do what Titans did and just gun him down in the street. I guess that works too. Holy shit. And so over the course of the movie, we're introduced to the new members of the team. In my Nightwing video, I had Starfire show up in the credits having already known Dick. So you could maybe explain that maybe she came to Earth when they were younger. Maybe that this was one of the original Titans first missions was helping her. Effectively making her an honorary member of the Fab Five. I think that could be fun. When it comes to Beast Boy, I'd love it if they can find a way to tie him into Doom Patrol and bring those characters into the universe. Doom Patrol has always been one of the most underrated teams in DC, despite having some genuinely fantastic comics. Also, I just want him to actually be fucking green, man. Is that too much to ask for? Raven is definitely a must. I'd like them to lean more into the Eastern inspired mystical side of her instead of just emo girl. But Cyborg is actually the character that I'm most interested in how they make him work. In recent years, Cyborg has been kind of promoted from the Titans and become a member of the mainline Justice League starting in 2011 with the New 52. And this was a decision that I'm sort of 50 50 on. I think he added some really interesting elements to that team dynamic, and it was cool to tie him to Apocalypse with the Mother Boxes. But at the same time, it was a little weird to take away his history and his relationships with characters like Dick and Wally and put him onto a team with the grown ups, especially without any younger characters for him to bounce off of. I guess they tried turning Barry into Wally again. I add another tick onto that count. Normally, Vic is portrayed as physically bigger than the rest of the Titans, towering over everybody else and played by actors in their 30s. Like, I'm sorry, this is a 25 year old man right here. There's nothing teen about that Titan. And while I really love the depictions we've seen in the past, like Ray Fisher and especially Javon Wade in Doom Patrol, instead, I think it might be fun to switch things up and go even younger with the character, making him like 15 or 16. That way we can actually see his literal growth from teen Titan into potential Justice League member. I prefer Cyborg to have more of his human parts showing like in Doom Patrol or David Walker and Ivan Rice's run from 2015 and not just a floating head on a robot. And as the actor gets older, it can justify giving him new cybernetics and new designs to sell more toys. Because let's be real, we all know that's what superhero movies are all about. Just ask any young Justice fan. <laughs> Sorry, is that too soon? I don't necessarily need to see the Wolfman and Perez roster recreated one to one. And there are some other honorable mentions that could be really fun to see in the movies. The first that comes to mind is Mal Duncan as Guardian, as well as his girlfriend Karen Beecher as Bumblebee. The two of them have a ton of history with the Titans, mainly as supporting characters, but they were some of the earliest black superheroes at DC and it'd be cool to see them shine. Blue Beetle is a character who's no stranger to being on the Teen Titans, namely in the 2000s with Tim, Connor, Bart, and Cassie. But after his movie and his upcoming animated series that I'm 99% sure they're going to fold into the main canon, I wouldn't be opposed to putting Jaime on this team. In the same fashion, I wouldn't be surprised if they make Supergirl an honorary member in some way or another. Usually she's more of a Justice League member, but she's teamed up with the Titans in the past. And I could see them taking Millie Alcock's Cara zor who looks like she's going to be a little bit younger, and grouping her up there with the rest of the kiddos. I'd also love to see Ace West get adapted to the big screen somehow. His publication history is weirdly complicated. Originally, he was the new 52 replacement for Wally West before Rebirth brought back the original and said they were both named after the same grandfather. But he's a really cool character and has grown into his own right. It'd be nice to simplify some stuff and give him that spotlight. As for the villain, I mean, it seems pretty obvious. The most iconic and fearsome enemy of the Teen Titans, whose name literally strikes fear into the hearts of children and adults everywhere. None other than Ding Dong Daddy. Also, there's Deathstroke, I guess. Seriously though, it feels like basically a no-brainer to have Deathstroke, not just because of his popularity with the 2003 show, but he was a fundamental aspect of the Wolfman and Perez run. Also, it's 2024. I think we can handle the name Deathstroke now. You don't have to just call him Slade. It could be really fun to set him up in a solo Nightwing movie before this and establish his hatred for Dick Grayson and the lengths he'll go for this beef he has with the teenager. Actually, I don't know. I don't think I want Slade within 100 yards of a teenager. Trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. I really don't want them to do Judas Contract, not just because of the really really bad thing, but also because it's just been done to death at this point. Lazarus Contract, on the other hand, the crossover event from 2016 was actually a pretty neat concept. It was about Slade using Wally to go back in time and prevent the death of his son, Grant Wilson. And it could be maybe cool to incorporate some elements from that, namely the different eras of Titans and how the old and the new guard intersect. And so if they don't end up going with Deathstroke, I think Brother Blood or Hive could make a really great second pick. There's also Raven's father, Trigon, you know, the devil from the Bible. He's a huge threat and his connection to Raven is an easy way to tie into the greater team dynamics and make things more personal. But that feels a little too big in scale and also kind of been done to death in movies and TV shows. And so I don't really need to see that in like the first movie or anything. Similarly, you could use the Tamaranians and Blackfire, which is also a pretty easy personal connection. It could justify the new team forming easier with everybody joining up to help Starfire. But that also feels a little bit too big in scale. I don't really want to see any world ending threats here, but let's be real. It's going to be Deathstroke. Like, I don't know what the point of debating it is. Just don't have him do that really, really bad thing. And we're good. One really important thing to get right is the tone. At their core, the Titans should be fun and youthful, but still mature enough for 
for all ages. And striking that balance is really important without going into either extreme. I don't want it to fall into the ultra gritty grimdark camp like so many other projects of Titans. I'm talking about Titans. That show is a whole can of worms, mainly due to the pilot being stuck in development hell for years, which is why it feels ripped right out of 2014 edginess that I could never really break free of. And that tone and that violence and that gratuitous attempt to be adult for a show that's mostly about teenagers is a main reason that I could never really get into it. I know there are people that love that show and there's some cool stuff to it, like that Superboy episode fucking rocks, but I, I'm sorry, I... I can't do it. Teen Titans Go, on the other hand, went way too far in the other direction with the silliness, and so it's important to find a balance somewhere between the two. I'm gonna be honest, I kinda like Teen Titans Go. I used to hate it just like everybody else, but I'm obviously not the target demographic or anything, but it's genuinely a pretty clever comedy about the DC universe. We don't have to talk about that. Like there was literally a bottle episode where everybody got trapped in a giant bottle. That's objectively the funniest thing ever. I'm sorry. One of my favorite artists, Gabriel Piccolo, has a series of fan art where he drew the Titans in a more casual setting. I love the vibe of this art and the energy of youth that he brings to it. And clearly so did DC because they hired him on to make an official Raven book. And I'd want to see the movie try to do the same. Capture that day-to-day -day feeling and the energy of just hanging out with your friends. I joked about it in the intro, but each member of the Titans needs to actually feel like teenagers. I mean, it's not called the geriatric adult Titans, but the youth and the energy energy of the team ever since its creation in 1964 and even more so after Wolfman and Perez took over is the primary reason why they were able to stand out amongst the heavy hitters like the Justice League. It was always the best part about the animated series, seeing these kids hanging out and just being regular teenagers. Which is ironic because they were literally in costume 24-7 and just never had names. Like I'm sorry, I love that show and everything and this Robin is obviously Dick Grayson if you pay attention, but if you asked anybody who's just like a casual fan who Coriander is, they would have no idea. Starfire, it's Starfire, that's her name. Beast Boy's name is Garfield and not enough people know that. There's this moment from the Jeff Johns run where a 15 year old Bart Allen got a Green Lantern tattoo and he was like, yeah, because if I got a lightning bolt, it would make my secret identity too obvious. And then it like immediately fades away because his healing factor is too fast. Like that's the kind of dumb bullshit I wanna see from the Titans. It was my favorite part about the new TMNT movie. Aside from just the gorgeous animation style, that movie cast actual kids and young adults to play the four turtles, which hadn't really been done before in a series called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were also all put in the same recording booth, all given the opportunity to improvise and bounce off each other, putting their own unique spin on the dialogue, which is why it feels so natural. Some of it was instantly super dated and cringe as expected. Hey, great. That, that guy's the goat of all time. Have a wah, 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 wah. But aside from that bit, I think that's part of the charm. They acted like kids so much to the point where they annoyed me as a grown adult. And I mean that in the best possible way. I'm not really a huge fan of casting super young child actors for 20 year long contracts and having them sign away their lives, but it would be really cool to get a younger cast who all have chemistry with each other and just let them see where it takes them, especially for a team where the relationships matter so much like the Titans, because that's really what the Teen Titans is all about. The Titans are special, not just because of the fun adventures or the costumes, but because they're friends, not just government agents on the same team or superheroes that work together for the common good. They're genuine, legitimate friends. When Dick Grayson was just starting out as Robin, he was still mourning the loss of his parents. And while Bruce Wayne helped him find peace and find justice, it was his friends and the people that he loved that helped him truly heal and move on to become his new family. And it's those experiences and those relationships and those people that drive him as a character and drive him to help others in that same way. So he can do the same thing for Raven, Vic, Gar, and Corey that Roy, Donna, Garth, and Wally did for him. In life, some of your friends are gonna drift away. Nothing lasts forever, that's just an inevitable part of growing up. The people that you thought you'd always keep in touch with can just fade away and you never hear from them again. But sometimes those friends stick around and sometimes they can last for a lifetime. But what do you wanna see from the DCU's Teen Titans? Do you want the classic roster or do you wanna mix it up some more? If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon for just $1 a month. Special thanks to Alta the Sting, Anz, News425, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy, Caroline Brenneman, Chicken McToofist, Dan, Danny Boy, Eden Kenna, Egan McFarlane, Evan Bowers, Fastest Man Dead, Finn Yates, Hannessy, Harper Sires, Howard Bell, If You Know You Know, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Kai Dud, Ken, Glass Bear Productions, Morpy, Murno9, Popcorn Eater123, Raptor77, Sherbet, Slapstick, Spectacular Clyde, TDW Fan, Theo Crouch, Tim Neufeld, Tracy by Razor's Lame, Tyler Goodrich, and Yesh Kapoor for being spectacular fanboys. Be responsible and I'll see you around.